Emoji J. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Grow Through It with me, your host, Cure Age or Cure. Um, we're here, everybody, who's 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. We are here every Monday or Tuesday if you're on a different time zone. Um, so here on Grow Through It, we talk a little bit about adversities. Um, each guest each week talks about something they have been through, something, you know, rough time in their past and what they did, how they did it to grow through that and become the people they are today. So, um, for example, with me, a little bit about me, my story, I grew up always playing sports. I played football, I played baseball, I played basketball, soccer. Um, but one sport I was introduced to right at the beginning, as soon as I could walk was martial arts. <laughs> so, um, I trained that growing up, and as I got older into my teen years, the UFC got bigger, and I realized, like, whoa, like, this is what I want to do. So I definitely pursued that career, and it became, I still kept the passion, but it became a job. And with that, I trained two, three times a day, four, five, sometimes even six days a week. And um, there I was in my early 20s. Um, professionally fighting and it was like a dream come true for me and um one day i woke up and i couldn't walk and so <laughs> um with that happening i um found out through doctor's appointments and things like that i had a herniated disc in my l6 my left leg was out of place which caused a lot of sciatic uh, nerve damage um so that was basically the end of my fresh career <laughs> as a professional MMA fighter. And um, instead of being bitter about it, I kind of became better, I guess you could say, instead of bitter, it became better. Um, and this is why I, I still, obviously I couldn't fight, but after rehab from my injury, I still couldn't stay away from the sport itself. So I would be at different gyms and I would be hanging out with the coaches now, you know, for a while in crutches and just on the sidelines, which I wasn't used to. And for me, like, because I wasn't busy working, right, getting training and getting ready for different things, I had more free time. And I noticed people started coming to me for advice and tips. And like I said, I wasn't bitter. I was very depressed. I went through a lot of depression, a lot, a lot of anxiety because of what happened. But um, I wasn't going to take it out on anyone, if that makes sense. I wasn't going to turn my back on the world. So I just kind of was flattered and you know, started helping people and started giving them advice and tips, things I did, things I would do, et cetera, et cetera. And fast forward a little bit, I started seeing these people flourish. Like these fighters became amazing. So I took that and I ran with it. And I got into the health aspect of it, the fitness aspect of it, the physical therapy aspect of it, even the emotional aspect of it. Um, so that is where I found that coaching for me is even more fulfilling than being in that cage or in that ring. And so that's kind of a little bit about my story and how I took something, you know, an adversity and just basically grew from it and grew through it. Um, because easily I could have, you know, like us all, you know, <clears throat> all of us go through different things that are hard and we can easily just turn away from the world or turn away from passions, make things, you know, negative Nancy, like people say, or, uh, the victim mentality, things like that. But I decided to just accept what came as it came. I mean, it wasn't easy, <laughs> but by a long shot. But, you know, in time and with practice and practice and practice, it became easier. Um, so with that being said, that was a little bit about me. Tonight we're going to hear for, uh, from a couple of great new guests. Um, first off, we're going to have Chiquita Picosa. She's going to be our first guest. Um, whenever you're ready, Chiquita, you can go ahead and request the guest box. And after her, stick around. We do have another guest. Uh, her name is That Cuban Girl. She's pretty fresh on the app, and she also has her own show. So we'll definitely talk a little bit about that. Um, so, yeah, Chiquita, whenever you're ready, go ahead and request that guest box, and we'll get you in here. And also stick around for the end because there is a little bit of news, and we're going to have both of them. Um, come in at the end and do a little recap and exchange of ideas and things like that. So should be fun. I am gonna have to make you small because I know emoji J was pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> Not the big box. <laughs> there we go. 
All right, now we got you. Hello, hello. How are you? Doing well. <laughs> good, good. I know you were, uh, when we last talked, you were kind of in the middle of moving and stuff. Yeah, still, still in the middle of it. Still. Between, between work and moving. moving. I think it's, it's definitely a hassle. <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely appreciate you being here. So thank you for that. Because I know, I mean, we've all, I'm sure a lot of us have moved several times in our life and it's never easy. It never gets easier. <laughs> So, and then on top of it, you have work, but I'm glad you can make a little bit of time to come and hang out with us. Of course. <laughs> um, so real quick, I just, I like to ask people a little bit about names. Um, Cause a lot of people ask me about my name. So where did, uh, obviously the little spicy, where did that come little from? <laughs> so, I mean, one of the biggest things is like, for one, I am, I'm of small stature, <laughs> so to keep that meaning, you know, I'm small, but as of course, every Latina, we have a little bit of a little spice, a little attitude in there. So yeah, <laughs> right. Chiquita Picosa, <laughs> just, just okay. a little spicy. So, so it just makes it like, <laughs> like big John or little, little John, sorry. He's like a big guy, but he's little <laughs> or he's called little. So like when I call you big spicy, I call her big spicy as a joke. <laughs> yeah. um, so exactly. it's kind of like one of those things okay <laughs> yeah. um so going into a little bit about your adversity this is something that's really cool that i like is that you're still growing through it is what you mentioned yep. <laughs> and which i love because if you think about it when are we not growing you know when are we not learning when are we not continuing bettering ourselves um so the fact that this adversity you chose to share with us that you're still gro growing through um, is pretty cool. And I'm sure it's rough for you, especially among the other things, but it's something a lot of people I'm guessing don't know about you on the app. Very few. I've mentioned it so, a couple of times, but it's not something that I mention all the time. Right, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about that. Cause I know we did have a talk a little bit before the show. Yeah, so. The adversity that I chose was um, me going through my divorce at the moment. Um, I was in a marriage for a handful of years, which was a very toxic, abusive relationship, uh, which right. ended up with <laughs> someone being unfaithful. Um, and for me, that was hard. That was really hard um, because it kind of broke all of the morals and values that I had. And so right. not only did it break me down mentally, emotionally, physically, but like it went down deep to the foundation of, of the person that I, that I really are. began questioning who I am and if what I do truly meant anything. So after like this whole year that I've been separated and going through everything it has really really put things into perspective and shown me that if you really really want to make things work you're gonna to have to work on yourself before anything else absolutely um i think that's definitely something that everyone can take away from that is don't get into right. something or involved with someone until you have least worked on yourself a bit you know there are a lot of people who that's where codependency comes from right like yeah. Um, they don't really work on themselves. They just kind of figure out what, how this other person can bring to their table. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. so, and you're, you're pretty young, right? You're yeah. 23 Very years young. young. 24. 24. <laughs> uh, I did so get married you, pretty young. <laughs> right. Is that, is that something that was kind of, you felt forced upon like in your culture like with your family or was it just something you just decide on a whim yeah. so i i was always a person that was like if i'm gonna date somebody there's intention behind it i feel there has to be like i have to see a future with somebody and i never really dated around i was set, like if i'm gonna find somebody i'm gonna go from beginning to end and yeah. so that's what happened but of course at the beginning everybody always has they always put on this persona make you believe uh, that they're yeah. everything you want to hear and at some point their true self comes out and 
at, I didn't want to believe certain things. I was like giving, I give people the benefit of the doubt. I give people chance after chance. But there came a point where I was like, I can't keep doing that to myself. You know, because I fell into a really, really big hole of depression. I hated who I was. I didn't have anybody. Like, I didn't have family. I didn't have friends. Cause I was isolated from pretty much everybody. Was and that your ch choosing or was that his kind of? That was, that was his choosing. His kind rules, of, basically. Yeah. Just cut me off from everyone I knew. Um, and just I'm sure you're not alone. Me about you know? it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's, that's the biggest thing, I think. Because I'm a very personal person. Like, I don't like to tell my business out there. And I never opened up to what was going on to anybody. So when word did come out, I mean, it was like hands and feet were kicking and punching everywhere because nobody knew and he, metaphorically, I mean, sort of, but- No, no, I, I get what you mean. I'm just thinking like who? Like who? He, was, he was going down with a fight, you know, like he didn't gotcha. want the separation and he i was not going to open up to my family about it and it came to a point where he he reached out to them and i think the hardest part for me was in a situation like that i expected my family to support me at at all costs you know yeah. but they didn't um instead they kind of guilt tripped me for what i did um Which in terms of divorce. protecting myself yeah, filing for divorce filing for a restraining order um I, at the time, I was going through pretty strenuous schooling, and it that was taking all of my time, and right. so I had to, I was living out of my car for several months before I could actually get him kicked out, and, Jeez. like, to go through the schooling I was going through and still not let myself get torn up was was pretty hard but after I finished school and I got a new job and everything finally kind of started to slow down there everything hit me at once and that's when everything started affecting me it started affecting me mentally it started affecting me at my job it, it's just it started affecting everything around me because I finally had time to kind of let myself accept everything that happened yeah just kind of figure it all out yeah so with that all going on like where or when did you feel like you were just sick and tired of being sick and tired was it when you were out there sleeping in your car or was it like well, <clears throat> something that you found out about him or so the time i was sleeping in my car i had already i had finally split from him it was a year about a year, year and a half before that, that I, I was tired of how the relationship was. I didn't want to be with him anymore. But I was so deep in a hole of depression that I needed to heal myself mentally so I can have the mental strength to go through whatever I needed to once I did split because I knew it wasn't going to be easy. So I took a year of just working on myself within that relationship uh, and it, it's things that he didn't like. I mean, him seeing that I was focusing on myself, doing things for me, it he did not like that one bit. And, and it's a very common thing for, I'm sure, narcissism, you know, and controlling. Like, he wanted you oh, yeah. to be down here with him, right? Because if you got up here, then he realized, well, no, because now she knows she can do better. Um, but it's like, if you think about it, it's like the, I don't know if this quote actually exists. I said it the other day, but um, if it doesn't serve us, then it doesn't deserve us, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, but everyone who's just joined, welcome to Grow Through It with me, your host, Cure Age or Cure. Um, this is our guest, one of our guests tonight, Chiquita Picosa. Um, <laughs> she's talking a little bit about one of her adversities, which we do here on the show, and how she's growing through it currently. Um, a very crazy and messy divorce from a very bad and toxic relationship. Um, so if you haven't hit her with the favorite, please do. She does stream. 
I haven't seen her stream in a little bit, but I'm sure she'll <laughs> be streaming soon. She's in the middle of moving. I will. Um, so <clears throat> with everything adding up, is that basically what got you to, like, that's it, I'm done? Yeah. Or did it, you have, like, a, a moment one day? So for me, I think the moment that kind of just kind of slapped me in the face and was, like, you need to, this is it, like, it was the the day he confronted me about his infidelity and mm -hmm. that for me is the biggest deal breaker and i think that just <coughs> kind of put everything else in perspective for me because it didn't matter what i what i did or how much i did for him it would never be enough and right, it was yeah. easier for him to find something else than to work on what was already there and what had a foundation and at that time i was in the middle of moving from one apartment to another and so that was hard because i didn't want to be around him i didn't want to see him and so like, how do you do that when you're moving to a new place like i couldn't just not move because i wouldn't have anywhere to go and it everything just went downhill from there and i just had to keep myself up and remind myself like there's always tomorrow you know tomorrow is going to be a new day it's it's going to come whatever comes comes you know and i always tell myself like the biggest thing i say all the time is just it is what it is like whatever it is right now that's how it's going to be i can't change uh, yeah. it if i can't change it right now I'm not going to give it my effort right and so i just kept going with what i was doing and working on myself um, i did step back from the job i was at because i need i needed a mental break i needed to let everything kind of work itself out for me mentally right. and around me um, and i needed to do something that would bring me some some peace some happiness which is how i got into becoming a chef i love cooking and so chef, I went <laughs> chef girl, I that sorry. route and it it has helped me so much like that for me is such a stress reliever and it it helped because I mean financially I wasn't in the best place um, <laughs> saying that when I did leave the relationship I mean he took everything I had and so it was definitely difficult, but I think That's there's there's always <laughs> it, it is an understatement, but one of the things that I never liked was hearing other people call me a victim. Like that that was one thing that I could never get into my head. So I never allowed myself because, to believe that. Because of what you were doing, like filing for a divorce and things like that. Is that what they were just the you? just for what I went through. You know, because I mean, there was. A well, there's a difference of... between, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, when you mm -hmm. are an actual victim <laughs> or we're just playing the victim mentality, you know, where, oh, poor me, poor of me. Course. Of or, course. Or obviously you weren't doing that. It was more no. so you were <laughs> reacting and responding to what was going on in your life. I don't see how, why I'm sure people were just, they didn't understand or they didn't care to. They just, I just never liked hearing the fact that people would call me a victim just because of what I went through because for me I don't know if you guys have heard about like the law of attraction but for me like the more you say something the more you're going to believe it and so if I let myself believe that I'm a victim I will fall into that mentality so I had to keep going as in I'm not a victim and I went through some hardships but I'm going to get out of it and so continuously doing that allowed me to keep going because it's not to say that there i mean there were times where i was like i can't yeah, but right. seeing how far i had already dogs. come was enough for me to be like okay i gotta keep going you know and so yeah. i did it took me quite a while to actually get out of the hole that i was in but i got into a place where even though things are moving slowly, as long as I keep moving, I'm eventually going to get there. Exactly. Yeah.
it's like the uh was it the old story the tort the rabbit and the turtle or tortoise yeah. or <laughs> the, like, the, the rabbit <laughs> the turtle ends up winning the race because it's like it's not a race it's a marathon or whatever so not to compare exactly. that to your story obviously i don't mean to demean your story no, um, it, it definitely but, it is that way though it definitely is a marathon it's because it doesn't yeah, matter even when things are done they're not really done there's always aftercare well, <laughs> right and it's a good thing like i'm assuming you guys did not have kids together no so that's good you gotta think about the plus size right like because that would always. just be that much more messy you know for you and everything mm -hmm. so now you said you've been like in the beginning you said you guys have been separated so the divorce is not final no um I and you don't really have to separated. share details about that um but however is there anything on your end that's keeping you from the divorce is it just him kicking and kicking and screaming so to speak um it's just legal processes so because oh, of everything that happened they couldn't officially they, they couldn't go through the divorce process because there was criminal court and restraining orders and then finally getting like we're barely a year later we're barely getting to <coughs> the um the family court which is for the divorce and it's at this point like it's mainly like me continuing to go because a lot of the times i go to it they always tell me like are you sure you even want to continue like it's the court system themselves trying to stop it because it is a tedious process right, and it's more work for them in the end so it yeah. makes sense <laughs> and so it's so with like all that time now how you said it's been a year mm -hmm. And so you said, and you're still growing through it. What part of that growth do you feel that you're still growing through? Like, is it him and the situation that happened itself? Like the fact that you got married, you pretty much gave up your whole life for him because he said to, and then you found out he's no good for you. And he's also cheating on you and things like that. Um, or is it just simply the process of the divorce? That's kind of like this, the growth process that you're still going through. So I feel like the, the divorce process just kind of has to play itself out. But for me, it's more unlearning all of the behaviors that I adapted uh, to, what's the word for it? Like all the, the, all the defense mechanisms I learned, all those little things. So you know that there I, are not every guy is like him, basically. Exactly. Because that, I mean, that's the biggest thing a lot of people are like, they go through one thing and they're like, everybody's going to do that to me. And I know right, that's not exactly. the case. And of for me, it was always just a reaction to things. And it's like, I, it was frustrating for me because I was never that way. He just broke me down so much that I developed these defense mechanisms because yeah. of what was going on. And so with having when to unlearn that too. and so. relearn things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I mean, yeah. not, not saying you're old, obviously you're still young, but like the fact that, you know, <laughs> you got involved at such a young age, it makes it even easier for him to be able to you know lay on these guilt trips and these you know basically these like creating you to cause these and have these defense mechanisms towards people in general not just him but now you i'm sure you have them towards some guys because of you know a little bit of ptsd so to speak from that situation yeah i, just, I keep myself very closed off like i I try that not to see it as like a bad thing. Through? Definitely. Like, like I... Trying to open back up to people. Yeah. Because it, it's definitely a hard thing because you know people may have good intentions, but at the same time, there's that little little person in the back of my mind telling me, like, they could, they could be lying to you. They could be trying to put you through the same thing. And it came to the point where it's like, I have to let actions speak for themselves, you know? Yeah. Like, anybody can tell you all the sweet beautiful things they want but if they're not showing it to you Whoa. it doesn't yeah. it doesn't matter yeah actions definitely speak louder than words words are nice to hear um and actions are even better to feel because they're, they're good to see but i feel like for me like actions you can feel them words you can feel too but nothing to, for me personally like nothing speaks to my soul like that i can feel it 
more than actions. Mm -hmm. um, so before I um, have you hop out for a little, I'm gonna have you come back to, to talk with that Cuban girl um, after her story. So basically, is there anything that, like, this is a lot that just like you explained to us mm -hmm. that, you know, from everything that you went through with the, obviously getting married at a young age, finding out and how quickly was it that you found out everything was it quick or was it kind of like a long time coming um in terms of like in what just aspect getting out of there like knowing like okay some red flags are starting to show that type of thing i mean at the beginning i had already seen things at the beginning but i was in the mindset where i was like i'm a, I'm a big person who likes to help people likes to fix help people learn to grow through their their little aspects and that right which is fine when they're willing to grow right exactly. and they're doing the same for you like that's that's so when like someone's a not willing to to work on themselves it makes it harder and right that's when i saw the repetition of him not wanting to do it or pretending to and then his all the same actions coming back that was where i was like I had to let go because I was hurting myself more than anything. Right. And you realize this isn't serving me anymore. <laughs> like, what am I, what, yeah. what good am I getting out of this? This is only bringing me down. And so <laughs> exactly. when you were in school, you were in school for culinary, right? Cause you said you're a chef now. No, I actually didn't go to school for culinary. Oh, wow. I, I went, yeah, I was in a whole different career field. Talk about a learning like, curve right there. <laughs> I know. I yeah. I'm like, I am blessed that I even got the job that I do because most places don't take anybody without culinary school or experience. So. <laughs> well, there you go. It's you know, like through through it all, you had all that difficulties, but you still have blessings, and those are the things we have to focus on. And like, to me, I feel like a lot of people, what we forget, and myself included, are the things that make us happy. You know, they may seem so small or so little when we have so much or such big things going on in our lives, like a divorce in your mm -hmm. case that like, oh, maybe you used to love running or maybe you used to love pottery or whatever it was that we forget those things exist and those things make us happy and we don't focus on them anymore. We kind of just like lay into our problems so much that like we forget, oh, I should probably do this. You know, it makes me smile. Even if it's just something like coloring and a co adult coloring book. I know a lot of people have those nowadays. They're kind of cool. Um, I have one myself and they are nice, you know, and they do, they're really cool. You took, put on some nice music, you start coloring and next thing you know, it's like you're in a meditative state and you're like, you're happier, right? So, and with your case, I feel like the whole, if it doesn't serve us, then it doesn't deserve us, right? um so that's that's cool i like that um is there anything else you wanted to share before i have you hop out of here yes. any any advice uh, for the odd not advice but anything that you'd like to kind of shout out to uh maybe there are people in here that have you know or are or have gone through something similar one of the biggest things is like not not downplaying yourself you know i think a lot of people when they go through things they they get so stuck in the emotions of what they're going through that they don't give themselves the benefit of the doubt that they can and they will get through things and you Absolutely. most people are stronger than they believe they are and so if you continuously remind yourself that you are strong you are you can get through that you will you know one step at a time and it's not a race it's a marathon right it sure is <laughs> <laughs> cool well thank you and uh stick around everybody stick around she'll be um back in a little bit i'm gonna have you hop out yeah. <clears throat> um so yeah it is pretty wild you know for someone especially at such an early young age to have gone through all that you know just the fact of getting married is you know it's very early but it happens, you know, we get married at young ages. We get divorces sometimes at young age, unfortunately, and that's life. But she's not letting it, you know, take control of everything. She's pushing back, 
you know she's not just sitting there as like an unhappy housewife where she could easily just be still in that marriage and unhappy and listening to all his you know rules and standards by being married to him by not having friends that she wasn't able to connect with anymore and things like that but she's like nope i am uh i might be little but i'm spicy <laughs> hence the name chiquita picosa so she's just like i'm gonna do something about it i am this is not me um so real quick before i have miss that cuban girl um She's got a very interesting story as well. So before I have her big spicy, there you go. You're going to have to change it or change it to chef spicy, chef picosa. Um, but before I have that Cuban girl come on in, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for all the love, the support for being here. Um, I really appreciate you all very much. I cannot acknowledge each and every one of you, but I do see you guys coming in. Um, just out of respect for the guests and the show, I can't acknowledge every single buddy and um, all the gifts, all the love. I do appreciate it. So ahead of time, I'm going to say that. <laughs> um, and real quick, in the middle of it all, I know I've mentioned this before. It's um, So before I read, the, every week I have a quote I read in the um, show. So everyone who's new here, welcome to Grow Through It with Cure Age. I'm your host. Before I go back here, we have a show every Monday at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. Um, so if you guys don't know your time zone, let me know. I can probably figure it out. I know Australia is around two o'clock PM on a Tuesday. Um, if you're in the UK or in Europe, it's about sometime early morning, Tuesday. <laughs> um, uh, if you're central time in the U S here, it is 11 PM that we start. So before I do read the quote, I want to talk again a little bit about the Kintsugi practice. Um, so Kintsugi is <clears throat> K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I. You guys are welcome to go look it up. It's very cool. It's very unique. It's a Japanese ritual, um, very ph philosophical. It's something that they do and they've done for, I don't even know, I want to say hundreds or maybe even thousands of years. <clears throat> it's a K-I-N, um, K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I. Kintsugi. So basically what it is, is they take a form of pottery, um, whether it's a bowl, whether it's a cup, something that they made with, you know, ceramic. And so they take that, they break it purposefully so that they can mold it back together, basically, with gold, melted gold. They take the melted gold and they seal it. So if you've seen different pottery, different things like that, um, maybe in a in a museum, maybe in, I don't know, a, a Japanese family's household, whatever it is, you, you'll notice there are certain gold creases. I think it's in other cultures as well, but I know it, especially in growing up a lot around a lot of Japanese culture. And it's basically the philosophy behind that is nothing is truly as beautiful until it's been broken down and built back up. Um, so this goes for every one of my guests I've ever been on my show, obviously, um, Chico, Chiquita that was just in here like I know that things you know are obviously going to be hard for all of us at some point of our lives right so when that happens we break down we do have some types sometimes the where we're broke where we feel broken right but we build ourselves back up hence grow through it go through it right so it's go through life or grow through life you know it's our choice in the end and by growing through our situations, our dark times, our adversities, we are basically, in a sense, metaphorically, we're sealing up our cracked ends, so to speak, with gold and making ourselves even more stronger, even more beautiful, if you want to call it that, or whatever you want to call it, we're making ourselves more, hence the term grow. <laughs> um, so with that being said, you guys can definitely check it out. Again, it's Kintsugi. K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I. Um, it's something that I learned about at a very young age. And I've always believed hard into it. So now I'm going to the quote right before we have that Cuban girl. Everybody who's just joined, welcome to Grow Through It. My name is Craig. I'm the host. Um, so there's a lot of noise. I apologize. Hopefully that's better. Um, 
before we have that Cuban girl come in, I'm going to read the quote of the week. And it's a little long, but I think it's good. I can repeat it if you guys need me to. It says, the past is in the past. And that's it. Done deal. And we cannot change it. So let's leave that where it lies. Let's not touch it or engage with it. We can recognize it. We can accept it. And we can redirect it in favor of something far more satisfying and filled with possibility. <clears throat> so again, I'll read it real quick. The past is in the past. That's it done deal and we cannot change it so let's leave that where it lies let's not touch it or engage with it we can recognize it we can accept it and we can redirect in favor of something far more satisfying and fill the possibility so basically accept it as it is you know it's hard for, for us to have different emotions and feelings with all this stuff and not to know what to do with them but if we just accept them like hey i'm feeling sad right now i'm very angry with this person or these people or myself whatever it is this is how i feel and i usually talk to people you know on my regular streams about things like this and we can look at it as a sense of st stepping on the side of the road right when car watching cars go back and forth back and forth um or if you want to be on a beach setting <laughs> you can work you can use we can use that too you're on a beach watching waves come in and go back out coming in back out so you know there's no need to as an ex surfer there's no need to take every wave right um and you know driving there's no need to jump in front of a car and get hit by the depression car so to speak right there's no need to hop into that wave of anger you know, because then you're just trapped in more anger and you're in a vicious cycle of anger or depression or what it is. But rather than we can accept that it's coming, accept and respect that it's there and then watch it kind of flow out, you know, like, and this is something I wanted to tell Chiquita is something that's good that I've always liked to use myself is this too shall pass, right? And I'm sure a lot, most of us, if not all of us have heard that saying. And so if we just kind of, if we can think of ourselves, like this is what I do is step aside be on that you know side of the road or be on that sand of the beach and just watch those waves or those cars going by not having to actually jump into them and just watch them like here's fear here's uh anger here's sadness here it is it's just coming by right or it's coming in like waves and not have to actually go into it you know we just it is what it is here we are like this is it i'm i'm feeling this way i'm okay with feeling this way it's all good, you know, it, this too shall pass. So with that being said, with that quote being uh, read out loud and all that, I'm going to introduce you all. Um, if you haven't already, please favorite our last guest, Chiquita Picosa. Um, right now we're gonna have that Cuban girl come on in, excuse me, and share with us her story, which is very interesting as well. Hopefully it can, there we are. Hello, how are you? Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you okay. You took care okay. of the noise. It's good. I wasn't sure what it was from. I, I don't know what was going on. I just had my AirPod in. So. Yeah, it's your AirPod, but you're good now. Okay, good, good. How are you? I'm doing amazing. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm super great. excited to have a chat with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming and being a guest. I know you have your own show every tuesday 2 p.m pacific right 5 p.m eastern yes so that'll be tomorrow at 2 p.m pacific <laughs> 5 p.m eastern time and it's called own it and you know we can talk about it a little later if you want or i don't feel yeah. like it now yeah absolutely i know it's kind of similar to this show um it's taking different things uh, about yourself because i know i was a guest on her show um and it's taking different things about yourself that maybe you're uncomfortable with things like that right and then instead of you know not liking it just owning it you know owning it up to i mean you, you can explain it a little bit better for those of you who guys just joined this is cube that cuban girl please give her a favorite um go ahead and explain it to us real quick and then we'll dive into a little bit of your story sure thank you Kira. yeah so um my show you guys is called own it and you know the intention behind my show is to own who we are just as how we are but also with the intention of growing every day right um we all have very unique stories <coughs> and we all come from very different paths of life 
but we are we're in different journeys together if that makes sense and for me I would like to, or what I'm doing on my show and own it is to bring a little bit of the experience that I've had in the entertainment industry um, to help people, to teach people, to have conversations with guests like you. Like our conversation was so great uh, when you were my guest. And, you know, kind of so we can all share where we come from, our struggles, and we can own it and don't, you know, not let those struggles um dim or light and also you know i love giving tips on branding and confidence confidence for me is a huge thing because it's something i didn't have growing up for many many years i didn't have confidence so that's one thing that i really touch on in my show is how to have more confident in your confidence in yourself so yeah every tuesday we own it that's what we do um yeah come check it out absolutely yeah everybody give her a favorite um, and everyone who's new here, welcome to Grow Through It. I am your host, Cure Age or Cure. This is our second guest of the night, Miss That Cuban Girl. Um, and I believe that Cuban Girl, where did that name come from? I, I think I know, but I'm going to ask anyways for everyone else to hear. Yeah, so I'm actually Cuban. <laughs> I was born and raised in Cuba. I moved to Miami when I was 14 years old. And, you know, it was um, for a long time. And this is where this is why I talk about branding on my show as well, because for a long time, um, being in entertainment, I I didn't really know um, what my brand was or how to really, I guess I didn't really understand that even if you come from somewhere different, that just that makes you different and unique. So for me, I wanted to really um, like touch on my culture on my roots a lot of people when i tell people i'm cuban a lot of people you know their first reaction is oh but like where were you born like are you from miami and i'm like no i'm actually raised born and raised in cuba i graduated eighth grade and i lived here at 14 and so like that's something that i take everywhere i go dear to my heart is my culture my language right because um spanish is my first language and sure. So I decided to, you know, when I started my YouTube channel a couple of years ago, I was trying to find like a name for it that was fun and kind of, you know, when you read it, you could kind of know what yeah. I'm about. Yeah. And so that's where that Cuban girl came from. I like that. And I believe you are also a former Miss Cuba. Yeah. So a little bit about myself. I put you too much on the spot, but I think that I was just making sure I was correct on that. Yes, you are correct. Um, just to, to let everybody know a little bit about myself is, um, you know, like I said, I'm Cuban. I moved to Los Angeles um, about nine years ago. And um, I've been in entertainment for, for many years. And, <coughs> you know, I started, I was modeling, I was dabbling in acting. And, you know, I, I've also done TV hosting. I'm actually a TV host. I have a show that's coming out on PBS Network next year that I'm super excited about because this is what I love wow, doing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so, yeah, in that journey, I was Miss Cuba. And it's something that I didn't Thank you guys. I see you all appreciate that. Um, being Miss Cuba and pageantry wasn't something that I planned. Um, in Cuba, we don't, it, we're different than other countries. We don't grow up even knowing what pageantry is. And so for me, you know, kind of stumbling into that, I did a TV show in Miami. It was a reality show. I did two episodes. Well, I went through like six auditions and then I ended up in two episodes of the show before I got eliminated. And after that, somebody said, hey, would you like to compete for Miss Cuba in Miami? Because in Cuba, we don't compete. We don't, you know, Cuba, unfortunately, due to other situations, we don't compete in the country, but we do have in Miami um, certain organizations that puts together the Miss Cuba um and you know they send us out to different international um contests you know pageants so i got sent to bolivia to represent cuba with all the other countries brazil and us and you name it you know <coughs> That's and very yeah cool. it must be like you know a lot of stress too yeah pageantry is very stressful i also competed on miss california usa after i did miss the miss cuba thing in bolivia um mm -hmm. it's very stressful but you know for me 
I, I'm the type of person that I try to make every experience positive and happy and joyful. And even though a lot of people, you know, think that pageantry is very catty, I can tell you out of my own experience, I never experienced that. Everything I experienced in pageantry was very supportive. It was a sisterhood. It was very positive because I believe that you, you attract what you are. And for me, I never went into pageants or modeling or anything with a catty outlook for it. And it's the same thing that I bring to meet me. Like I don't ever come in here trying to compare myself or compete to other streamers. Like I am who I am and I own who I am and you know, I make mistakes and I'm flawed, but um, back to your question, like situations that may seem really, really stressful, like pageantry. Yes. Cause you have to be prepared and you have to, have certain training but at the same time i took so much more from it so much more yeah i bet i mean <clears throat> i bet it's really great too because you were able to get a lot of opportunities that came from that right yeah i mean after that obviously people people you know you tell somebody oh i was a former miss usa or miss cuba or miss columbia then they look at you put it high on the resume <laughs> Right. And like, if you're in the entertainment industry, it definitely helps you because people look at it like, oh my God. And you know, a lot of times, and it's back to what you and I were talking about, you know, when you and I talked on the phone, like it goes back to confidence because a lot of times you do a lot. Like I know, and I'm aware that I've done a lot in the industry. I might not be famous, but I have done a lot in the last 10 years. And there's still that little part of me that even until this day doubts and has no confidence and like growing up and, 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 um, doing all these things on TV, even when I was on that TV show, I got eliminated. You guys be literally the judge looked at me and said, I am eliminating you because you do not stop talking about how insecure you are because all the other girls you're competing with at the time, all the other girls were beauty queens and i wasn't this is me for miss cuba so i felt like i was just this girl from cuba that like had nothing in my resume and in my mind i was like what am i doing here and that even though i had gone through the auditions and, and i was on the show right the judge looked at me and was like you were insecure so like <coughs> to be more confident and believe in yourself you're here yeah so i don't know if you saw what i just did there but uh I want you to talk about yourself because if you go back and hear everything you just said about yourself, it kind of helps with the topic of your adversity, which is self-doubt, um, fear of ab abandonment, and things like that, and being insecure of who you are. But then if you think back for a second, I just did a little trick on you. I, just, I never done this before, but I want to go with you. So I just had you just explain about yourself all these things that you can now think back okay what did i just say and then every everything that you think about it was like wow i did that i forgot i did that i just said i did it even though i don't believe it sometimes but i'm saying it out loud in front of whatever, however many people there are here listening like there you go <laughs> so i don't know if that helps but hopefully it helped a little bit of your self-doubt because you are here you know and i know that's something that is what we talked about is something that you still grow through at this, you know, even now, but something that was even harder when you were younger. And going back to that, why do you feel, or maybe you know why, like it was such a big thing or where did it come from that you had all this insecurity and self-doubt? Do you think that it was maybe because you were a foreigner, so to speak, like for a while coming into a new country, or was it because <clears throat> your lifestyle culture how you grew up was just never about any of these things like being on television being miss cuba and you know things like that pageantry in general it definitely comes back to your childhood <laughs> you know when i was growing up in cuba i um I, I was bullied it wasn't like terrible but it was any kind of bullying is is bad right like you know i had people because i was always tall i was always different looking like i was very tall cubans are the average cuban is not tall and so yeah. for me i always stuck out i had big eyes growing up so people would call me like frog eyes and 
you know, all, all kinds of things like boys didn't like me, but they would like my friends and those little things that you grow up and, and subconsciously they tell you that you're not, you're different and people don't like you or they don't pick you. And also I had also a big abandonment issue because my dad abandoned me when I was one month and my mom remarried somebody when I was two. She told me that that person was my actual dad. And then at 14, because I had my actual dad's last name, she had to come clean basically and say, hey, by the way, this person, you know, my stepdad, he did a lot for me. He also had a big alcoholism problem. And I went through a lot of trauma growing up with that marriage of them. And then at 14, my mom's like, by the way, that person you've been struggling with for years is not your real dad. Like, this other person's your dad and he has the only reason i'm telling you is because he has to legally sign you out of the country because you need his permission to leave and by the way you have two siblings and so i was 14 finding out all these lies and the fact that i was abandoned the fact that i had just dealt with an alcoholic chronic alcoholic stepdad who was great during the day but became a monster at night <clears throat> Um, now this, I have a new dad. Now I'm meeting him now. Like I have a brother and a sister and now I'm leaving in a week to the, to the U S so meeting my seven year old sister and my 12 year old brother at the time and leaving to the U S now it's like, I have all this information, all this trauma, all this confusion that I'm yeah, right. to the US. Confusion. <laughs> it was terrible. And then I moved to the U S and I blamed my mom. I was so angry at my mom. I spent, I spent like three years like being so angry at my mom because I like could not fathom why she would lie to me. And like, even though now I understand because I'm older and I'm a woman, it's like, yeah, what would you do for your kids, right? Like she's just going through her own journey. And she was confused as well, right? And I get it now, but being a teenager, being left with all this information, I was so angry at my mom. And like, I, I started creating a lot of trauma around relationships, around like, you know, feeling abandoned, but not knowing where that came from. And obviously all of those circumstances led to me not being confident, being insecure, growing up not believing in myself like i had all these dreams but i didn't believe that people actually loved me or wanted me i wanted to feel chosen i wanted to feel loved and so i started seeking that in relationships and that's something that i'm still healing through it's a daily work it doesn't stop you know absolutely when we stop growing we're basically not alive anymore we're just existing um and healing you know and learning things like that those are things we must do on a daily basis even if it's the you know the whole one percent better um i forgot the author's name of that but it's uh it's very important that we continue that um so here you are 14 years old moving to the u.s very confused <laughs> and very angry sorry i'm gonna try pause shaking a little um with your mom and you said that that was for three years what obviously like you said you're still growing through the whole you know self-doubt process the abandonment things and seeking in relationships seeking you know what you didn't get <clears throat> growing up you know from from a fatherly figure seeking for that from certain males in relationships um so obviously, you know, you're still working on yourself in that aspect, but what part of the anger towards your mother, when did that, I mean, obviously we know why you shared why, when did that stop to the point where you forgave her or at least started talking to her again? And No, I never stopped talking to her. We lived together. I never stopped talking to her, but I, I was very angry inside for, it was actually more than three years. It was about from 14 to 18, because I remember when I turned, at 16, I started kind of rebelling. I was never a bad kid. It was never about me going and doing, you know, but it was more rebelling. Like I would just talk back at her and like not really care. Um, but I, it, I, I, I have my, I had my spiritual like awakening um, in, back in 2017. And I think being in my twenties, having that spiritual awakening, 
truly helped me come to forgiveness. And I even also called my dad, my biological father on the phone in Cuba. And I, he picked up the phone and I said, Hey, it's me. And there was like a silent moment. And then I said to him, yeah, you know, you and I have never talked about this, but I want you to know that I forgave you for everything. And I did that with my dad and that was important to me. And then I've done that with my mom several times as well. And my mom and I actually have a great relationship now. We have very deep conversations. Uh, my mom actually raised me being very, she was very strict. She was, she overprotected me to the max and I never liked that. And that's something we've talked about. And she now, she now tells me I can tell her anything and I've told her like deep secrets and she's listened and she's held space for me. And so it's just really important to forgive people, even when they hurt you, even when they, um, do you wrong because it's never about you. You know, they are going right. through their own situations and their own traumas. Yeah. And, and it's not like she did it on purpose, obviously. But so what, what I was saying was what came about to get you to that point where I'm like, where you're like, I'm just going to forgive. Her. I'm just going to be okay with, sorry, <laughs> with everything that, you know, happened. And I'm just going to move forward with my mom. Was there like a certain event or was it just kind of like after a long time, you're just tired of being angry with her? Um, I stopped being, I'm not the type of person who holds resentment for a long time. That's just who I am. I'm really not like that. So when I say I was angry at her, I was angry at her when I was a teenager. But when I got into my 20s, it, that started dissipating. But it also, but it became stronger when I started my <laughs> awakening you know i started meditating reading self-help books um you know inspirational uh spiritual things and so when i started my practices then i truly began understanding to understand that forgiveness is really important and and that's it was a it, it kind of just happened it wasn't anything that really triggered it other than a spiritual awakening of like through a relationship that i had at that point um I started realizing, like that person, actually, that person that I dated told me, you need to call your dad and forgive your dad. And then through my forgiveness of my father came the forgiveness of my mother as well. So it just kind of all came together as you got older. That's yeah. pretty cool. So before, so go ahead, Chiquita, if you're, when you're still here, go ahead and request the box and I'll have you come on in with. Um, that Cuban girl. So real quick, what would you say the biggest growth that you went through and got to that point of growth? Um, what, what was the biggest part that you feel that you've grown the most from that whole, you know, from your story of, you know, growing up 14 years in one country, moving finding out you have a whole nother dad, you have two siblings into another country and then, you know, so on and so forth. Where do you feel that? Like, cause I know the biggest thing that you've been facing and you still face to this day, like you said, every day, it's a challenge. Where do you feel that the biggest growth, maybe aha moment, um, so to speak, that you felt like, okay, here I am now. I am, I am this, like, I, I, I realize I am, you know, what you said, like, when you were in the pageant, like, I can't believe this is happening to me, you know, things like that. So wh where, where about those, that, those times, where did you feel that you really had that, like, wow, I did it. Like, this is me where you could actually look in the mirror and recognize yourself. Um, today, I would say, I would say like, it's, today. well, it's, you know, there's been, um, today and yesterday, if I'm honest, like there's been a lot of, a lot of things that have happened in my life in the last year or so, or two years that have added to my understanding of my childhood, my family dynamic and who I am today. And so I feel like, I feel like for me right now is remembering like what you said, what, you know, you said, I, I tricked you. I wanted you to talk about what you've done. That's literally yeah. things I do every day with myself because it's like, you have to remember what you've done. You can't just like, a lot of times we tend to look at what we haven't done because we want to do so much, but then it's like, no, you've done all these things. Like give yourself right. credit for that. 
And it's just like in the quote, you know, it says the past, the past, done deal. We cannot change it. So let's leave it where it lies. But it says we can recognize it. So you recognize, you know, what you've done, even though there's so many things you still want to accomplish. And same with Chiquita, so many things she still wants to accomplish. Um, and, but we can also accept the past, you know, the hard things and the good things. Obviously, that's easier to accept and recognize. But we don't have to live there, basically, is what it's saying. So it's not about forgetting the past. It's just about moving from it, right? Yeah, I think it's about accepting, going accepting the past because you cannot change right. it. And not right. necessarily forgetting it, but being able to accept it and just know that you're here and you can move forward with that knowledge and do things differently moving forward. Yeah, you use it to learn. What's your take on that, Miss Miss Chef? <laughs> Chef Spice. I think there's something she said towards the end was like about forgiving people. And I think that's one thing that I I struggled with and I had to learn over the years that a lot of people think that forgiving someone is for them but in reality forgiveness is for yourself it that forgiveness right. is going to help you let go of everything and just accept what happened you know and that that for me was the biggest thing because I mean, a lot of my family is like has so much hate for my ex but like for me it it happened like there's nothing that i can do about it now i right. forgave and him and the person he was I and mean, he has growing to do but I took what I needed to from that experience and I learned from it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, it's easy to carry hate, even though to me, my theory is hate is a man-made word because it derives from different things, right? Hate derives from anger, jealousy, this and that, which also derives, if you go all the way deep rooted, it's a motion of fear based, right? All those hate, anger, all those things that are derived essentially from fear. We're afraid of this going to happen. We're afraid that's going to happen. We're afraid that this is this, this, whatever. So to hate someone, it's like, it really takes a toll on you after a while. And so why, why carry that around? You know, I, I get that we want people to feel our wrath. They want, we want people to feel punished, so to speak, because they did us wrong. But, you know, it's, uh, were you going to say something? Oh, no, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't know if you were waving or if you were, like, raising your finger to the top. I was raising my finger, but when you're done. <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just kind of going on. I realized my ring light's dying. That's why it's so dim. <laughs> I was just going to say that, you know, scientifically, it takes more energy uh, to have negative thoughts and to have positive thoughts. So that means that every yeah. time we're having negative thoughts and anger, we're actually burning through our energy. And that's why being negative hurts and drains us so much more than having like positive thoughts. I was going to say that same thing. I'm like, exactly. hating people takes way too much energy for me. I just let it yeah, go. And what, and what does it, it do for <laughs> us? What does it really do for us? You know, and it goes back to that one saying like, if it doesn't serve us, it doesn't deserve us. Or they don't serve yeah. us, they don't deserve us. Um, so real quick before we end it, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for all the love and support. And for everyone who's been here through the show or just got here, this is Grow Through It. I am your host, Cure Age or Cure. Um, it's every Monday night at 9 p.m. Pacific is when we start, or midnight Eastern. Um, so if you want to be a guest on this show, go ahead and hit the favorite. And please hear my two guests tonight, Chiquita Picosa and that Cuban girl. Um, but you can message me on Instagram. You can message me on um, Snapchat as well. And we can get you on a show and talk about your adversity and what you've been through and how you grew through it and grew from it to become basically the person you are, like these two young ladies, I'll say, um, that are in my box right now. So before I go ahead and close out the show, is there anything you ladies would like to share with the audience um, regarding your story, regarding your, maybe your show, um, anything like that? Okay, I'll go. So I just want to say to everybody who's watching today, and first of all, to be that my heart's with you, you're so <laughs> strong. And for anybody who's watching, you know, we all go through struggles. We all go, we all have our own stories, but it's so important to just 
let like truly let go let go of the fear of the resentments of the anger forgive that forgiving doesn't mean that you have to be in that person's life necessarily but forgiving takes a big weight off your shoulders and yeah so if you guys would love to favor me i'm a daily streamer and i have my show own it every single tuesday at 5 p.m eastern time 2 p.m pacific which is tomorrow where i also i highlight guests and we have meaningful conversations like this and you know hopefully it makes you grow and own who you truly are absolutely and chef spicy <laughs> do you have anything that you like to share i think one of the biggest things that I mean, I love to remind people about it because I mean, you never, ever know what anybody's going through. So one of the biggest things you can do is like be kind to people because you, I think people yeah. take for granted like their kindness, like one little thing can really, really change somebody's day. And yeah, just you just, you never right? know what somebody's going through. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's just sharing kindness. It's, uh, it's free, <laughs> right? It is free. It's it free. It doesn't cost. It takes <laughs> about thir not even thirty seconds of your time sometimes, and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, well, again, ladies, thank you for being guests tonight. And um, everyone, please, while they're in, still in the box, hit them both with the favorite. They do stream pretty much daily, so hit them with the favorite. Go show them love, and we appreciate all the love. Um, and go hang thank out with them. Get to know them on another here. level. Absolutely. Thank you, Cuban girl. Thank you, Chiquita. I appreciate you girls both. Um, and anyone who else is interested in being on the show, sorry, my ring light is dying for some, I got to charge it. Apparently this is a portable one. But um, so anyone who's interested in being on the show as a guest to basically talk about your one of your adversities, one of your rough times in your life, <clears throat> and talk about how you grew through that rough time or that adversity um what you did the steps you took why how all of the above um go ahead and favorite me and hit that sorry hit that favorite and um add me on instagram add me on snapchat whichever one you prefer and you can message me and um you know we'll definitely get you scheduled on the show so with all of that being said i appreciate all love everybody um i know i cannot acknowledge everybody that came in but i do appreciate you all for being here um, I did see you all come in, so I appreciate all of you. And um, I'm going to go ahead and say good night. I probably will come back on a little later in 45 minutes or so. If you want to come back, chat up a little bit, maybe do a little recap of the show, we can do that. Um, but for now, I'm going to hop off here. And um, you guys, if I don't see you, have a great rest of your night. <laughs>